we see is that in around 2010, we shift the strategy a little bit to become a little bit more than just a hotel provider. We become a mixed-use developer. Okay. So we built our first mixed-use development in Bichuak, Kuta, Bali. And in 2016, looking at the ability of the company to manage the portfolios, to drive sales and whatnot, to actually develop, uh, uh, our principal ultimately uh, gave us the trust to actually consolidate all of the ownership under one company, Indonesian Paradise Property. Now it covers about 40% of Plaza Indonesia. It's now under Indonesian Paradise Property. We have about 2,500 room keys of hotels. And we have the Beachwalk Hotel, uh, the Beachwalk Mall, the Pasir Kaliki Hyper Square, 23 Pascal. And, uh, it, you know, from, from, a, from a layman's perspective, it just sounds property. But actually, from a property player perspective, we split property sector into two, a two areas. Sales property and recurring income property. Now, our business is 90% recurring income. That comes with its own sets of pros and cons. Cons is that my capital recycle is slower, but the pro is I am a lot more stable than compared to other, a lot of other companies, especially when they're going through one of the worst property down troughs in recent memory, oh, I feel, okay. right? Yeah. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the lingo of the capital market, it's as if you're choosing between are you investing into capital, equity, say, equity stock or bonds? Mm -hmm. My company is more like a bond, whereby even in a relatively tougher times, I'm still clipping coupon. I still have recurring income. Now, now it bridges to the REIT discussion. What is a company, a publicly listed company with 90% recurring income? You talk about what is the most natural form of fundraising mm -hmm. to that, right? So if you're sales driven, tendency is when later on, when, 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 when uh, market comes back to normal property, well, Pollux is gonna leave me in the dust. <laughs> but in a tougher times like this, mm -hmm. the investor starts to see who actually has a lot more conservative capital structure? Oh. So companies like mine is most naturally tendency towards bonds mm -hmm. because bonds are also, you know, you raise principles and then you coupon, you clip the coupon. Mm -hmm. Or what we just recently, uh, after two years of very painful <laughs> and honest bruises uh, lobbying with the government, and uh, I think I'm proud uh, with it, what the team has achieved to issue uh, what I'd like to believe one of the largest REITs in Indonesia. And it's a proper REIT whereby uh, 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 it's, it has offshore investors. It offers, uh, it's, it's, it's listed in JSX as well. It's, uh, I think in the previous uh, speaker, you were talking about the challenges of tax. Mm -hmm. It was a really good collaboration between MOF OJK, and also the current administration's agenda of actually uh, providing, bringing to market innovative and effective uh, innov uh, in financial instrument to bring in foreign money in. Mm -hmm. right? okay. So we have, uh, our, our anchor investor is Japanese. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, why do they invest in us? Obviously because not just the macro perspective, it's the supportive. We talk about increasing consumption rates. We're talking about increasing tourism rates. Mm. But also, now we jump into the topic of about capital markets. They only want to come in if we're in the capital market. Ah, oh, okay.